Hello again YouTube. As promised in my last video on this R6871E uh, digital multimeter from Advantest, uh, I'm going to be doing a teardown today. Uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth, but uh, we will take, it, uh, the, take the covers off and have a look at uh, how the circuit's designed and some interesting construction techniques they've got in there. Um, I have had this apart once before when I first got it, and I was kind of shocked at uh, the way that it's built inside, so let's crack it open and take a look. I think this is going to be pretty typical uh, test equipment construction. Uh, I believe when I took it apart before, it's uh, basically just these four standoffs at the back are going to come out and then we're going to slide the covers off. Okay, so we'll leave the bottom side for now and just take a look at the top. And not surprisingly, it's a sea of through-hole components. Um, looks to be all or mostly digital. Um, so let's have a closer look. I'm going to try and uh, do the best I can with this camera setup here. Unfortunately, it's not the greatest. I'm sorry. Okay, I got some focus happening there. Um, so um, basically, this is definitely the digital board. Um, you can see this main processor here is a MC68HC000. Um, from Motorola, pretty typical of the time and very popular in embedded systems like this. Um, it looks like we've got a couple of buses going this way, um, which seem to connect into the GPIB, and um, these I believe are the memory bus, uh, given that these are two uh, EPROMs, uh, windowed EPROMs. So, uh, what we've got here is, let me have a closer look, um, the two EPROMs are 27C512s, um, date codes, by the way, are uh, 9535 on these, um, 9605 here, uh, 9509, so that uh, puts this sometime early 1996, I would guess. Um, so yeah, we've got two, um, I believe these are 512 by 8 um, EPROMs. And then we've got uh, Toshiba HM62256BLP. Dash 12, that's probably 12 nanoseconds uh, SRAM or something like that. Um, Toshiba, um, there are two of them, TC5564APL-15. Again, maybe DRAM or SRAM, something like that. And uh, CSI CAT 28C16, so some double E prom there. Um, this is just uh, 74HC00, some NAND, uh, and 74H. Sorry, no, that's a TC4066. Uh, Excellent. Okay, and uh, of course we've got a backup battery here for the calibration constants. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pull out a meter later and uh, we'll check if that's still good and if I need to think about replacing it. Um, over here, 74HC175. I believe that's a flip-flop. Um, Over to the right here, this uh, ribbon cable goes off to the GPIB at the back. Um, we've got a buzzer, uh, obviously for the annoying beep when you press the buttons. Um, some more 74 uh, HC14 Schmidt trigger inverter. So just a Schmidt trigger there that's probably driving this, I would guess. Um, we've got a P9548 and a P9542. Uh, from National Semiconductor. Actually, these may be, sorry, these are 75160 and 75161. Those are standard uh, GPIB drivers uh, driving the GPIB bus. Uh, we've got a 74HC32. 32 is a uh, two input NOR gate. Uh, I'm not sure what that's, just some glue logic, obviously. Uh, we've got some more of this 62256BLP uh, 12 Toshiba SRAM, I think that is. Some more double E prom, another 28C16, and then this TMS 99C14. I'm gonna bet that that's a GPIB controller. Um, and some more glue logic here 74HC595, HC595, and HC165 and 165. So the uh, 595s, we know that part well. That is a um, shift register. And the 165 is a um, parallel load shift register. So um, 
I guess they're just using these as buffers. Um, or they may be driving serial signal in. I'm not sure why they'd need both of these because they seem to be tied in parallel. Um, not quite sure what they're doing there, but obviously they're driving into the bus of this uh, TMS GPIB controller, I believe is what's happening there. And we'll move further up towards the core of this logic board. There's that big beast, I believe that's a 40 pin wide dip. Um, huge. And uh, that is obviously going to be the main processor. So, I so what I suspect is happening back here is that uh, these two obviously go to the front panel. Um, I suspect that one of them is for the buttons. I suspect it's probably this one. And then um, the larger, fatter cable uh, is probably for the LEDs uh, to drive all those segments. And many of the buttons are lit as well. So that's probably what that's for. These uh, are 74AS373. <laughs> 74AS series never really took off, did it? Um, this is the NECD8279. I'm going to guess that's some kind of parallel, uh, maybe a display driver or a uh, microcontroller or something like that that's controlling this front panel um, display. We might know more if uh, I take the front panel off. I don't know how hard that's going to be, um, but hopefully we'll get there. Uh, we've got the main clock over here. This is a 16 megahertz crystal. Um, and just a bunch of glue logic. There's nothing else that's too interesting here. It's all 74HC00, 74HC10, um, just a bunch of standard uh, glue logic. Um, up here, it looks like driving this bus, and I'm not sure what these two are for. They don't seem to have any traces going over to this connector, um, but obviously they're similar and uh, going somewhere else. These are Toshiba TD62785Ps. Um, and yeah, they're all the same. 62785P. I'm not sure what those are. Some kind of bus driver, maybe. Um, so that's about it for this side. I do want to give you a look at one more thing here. This is kind of interesting. Um, Alright, well, I can't get to you much closer than that, but they've got. Uh, well, it looks like three transformers. Um, this little test point here is labeled A, D, C, K, um, A to D clock maybe, um, something like that. Um, and then there's these three transformers. Um, I really have no idea what they're for. I'm wondering, actually this is probably the um, isolation. Yeah, I don't see any optocouplers on here, and while they might be on the analog board, I'm going to guess that they're using these as uh, one-to-ones, they definitely look one-to-one -one, um, signal transformers for a serial bus coming from J5 here, which probably goes through to the other board on the other side, uh, which obviously has the analog circuitry. So, yeah, I'm thinking that these are the isolation, um, which is kind of interesting because there really isn't any clearance um, between these traces and um, it doesn't look like they've you know allowed for any particular uh, creepage or clearance or anything um, if that is in fact the, what is happening here um, we'll know more when we look on the other side and find the corresponding connector but that it sure doesn't look like they've spent much attention to isolating um, high voltage isolation if that's in fact what this is for. So uh, let's flip it over and have a look at the analog side. Now that's a shield. So this gigantic shield obviously they got the whole analog section in a can. Uh, even the, the rear inputs back here are in their own shielding can. Um, next to the mains. So <laughs> they obviously felt they needed to shield that. Let's get that can off. And take a look at that. We've got some really crazy stuff in here that uh, I want you guys to see. Um, it's pretty interesting. So First, let's take a look at what I was just talking about with those, uh, what I think are probably isolation transformers of some, some type. 
So there you can actually see that they've got the same thing. Um, this connector here, labeled J5, I believe that corresponds exactly to, um, come on, focus. I guess that's as good as it gets. So this uh, connector here, labeled J5, I think this corresponds exactly to what we had a similar um, setup on the other side of the, of the meter. Um, so I'm still, you know, not seeing a lot of isolation gap here. This side does seem to be better. Uh, if you look across here, there don't seem to be any traces running near the, uh, what I assume they're using as an isolation boundary um, along between the sides of this, these transformers. So I guess they're, they're coupling it through the transformers on this side of the board, through the connector to the other side, and then coupling it through another pair of transformers. So maybe that's combined the two um, isolation gaps with the um, isolated section in between them may give them sufficient isolation that they don't actually need it on the board on the other side. Um, so that's an interesting way of doing that. I don't see any optocouplers on this side either, so I suspect that that's how they're getting their isolation uh, for safety. So interesting. Okay. Um, so we'll start at the back again. Um, this here is the bottom of that big mains transformer and they just got a little uh, binding area over here to connect everything up, which is quite nice. This is obviously a heat sink and we got some large filter caps down here. These are, I believe that's the Nippon Chemicon logo. They all seem to be 25 volt, uh, 3300 microfarads. Um, down here there's a little bridge rectifier, a little brown round bridge rectifier, and this is the mains uh, coming in from the transformer. So it looks like they've got two, um, four, six, eight, maybe four taps on the transformer, um, or four windings I should say. Uh, and then it looks like they've even got shrink wrap on these two uh, filter caps. I'm not sure why they've done that, and they haven't for the other ones. Um, but yeah, these two are definitely shrink wrapped together. Not sure what that's about. Um, I don't think I can see in here to see what those are. They're uh, TO220s. Um, there are five of them. So it may be that there are five separate windings. Each one gets a regulator perhaps. Or they may be doing a split rail or something like that. Um, but anyways, there's five in there. I suspect they're probably linear voltage regulators. Um, I don't see enough resistors around uh, this section that they would be setting up dividers or anything for um, uh, you know a custom uh, self discrete built uh, linear regulator. So two bridge rectifiers and five I think just are uh, linear regulators there. And just look at those traces. That is a beautiful star ground point right here, and you can see all the fat ground traces just snaking off uh, to different parts of the board. I count, oh man, there's at least 15 ground traces running away from this star ground, um, which is right on that uh, bridge rectifier in the power supply, so <laughs> they know what they're doing. Um, Come up to the top of the board a little. I'm sorry about the lighting. This is, like I said, in my kitchen. I don't have a lot of control over it, um, but we do the best we can. Right, so I'm gonna go over this uh, section over here uh, one more time. I keep messing it up and I look at the footage on the camera and it looks terrible, so I wish I had a monitor to monitor this on, but uh, we'll go through it again. Um, so basically, what I think they've got going on here, I believe that this is probably the multi-slope ADC down here. Um, I, I think that because this here is an LM316H. I'm not sure, but I think that's probably the main reference given there's a minus 10 volt um, checkpoint right here and the amount of precision components around here. So you've got an LF356, um, we've got um, all these CAN transistors, probably amplifiers. Um, not sure what they are. I can't really read them easily because the markings on the side and I don't want to stick my head right in there. Um, we've got another, uh, this is a sharp part. It is an IR9311. 
Not sure what that's doing. Um, we got another LF356, another LF356, and several OP07s, which are precision op amps, uh, as well as these are all marked R, and I suspect that they are probably high precision resistors, probably 0.01% or 0.05%, something like that. Um, so those are obviously high precision components. If we come over to the other side here, we've got, uh, I think these are silver mica caps, high stability. Um, we've got, this is also a capacitor which is interesting, it's a 33,000 picofarad or 33 nanofarad 2% um, capacitor. Uh, I might look up the part number, I'm curious to know what the dielectric is, I haven't seen one that's been potted like this one has um, before. It, they've obviously poured something in, I don't know if you can tell that in the, in the camera, but it looks potted. Um, so that's interesting, I'm, I'm curious about that capacitor. Um, this, I think it's a hybrid, um, it's got quite a lot of pins on the bottom, you obviously can't see that, but uh, it's labeled RF9413 THD676. I suspect this is a custom hybrid that's doing some of the multi-slope ADC. Not sure exactly what they would cram on there, um, other than maybe some high-speed digital or something to do the timing. Um, I don't see any clocks nearby or anything like that, so I'm not totally sure how they're going to be measuring with this. So um, I'd have to, I might look in the service manual and see if I can find out more about the architecture and just maybe annotate or something. Um, this is another OP07 high precision op amp. Um, and some more transistors. Um, these ones are kind of interesting. They are extremely tall TO92s. They're like double height. And uh, let me look at the part number again. Um, I know my camera hates this flashlight, but I can't see it without it. Uh, it is a C1573-R, uh, labeled Japan. So everything in this meter so far has practically been Japanese. Um, got some more LF356. This is an LT1001. I believe that's an ultra low offset op amp. I'll look that one up and put that on the um, on the screen. Um, this here is a very interesting looking three terminal. Um, I think it's a capacitor, maybe a resistor. Um, it's labeled ZD-2AR. It says 65. Um, it's got one, two, three pins. Um, Really not sure what that would be. It's also air wired onto a resistor which comes down to the pad on the board. So it's got the two pins on this side and then this one is air wired to a resistor uh, before it hits the board. So this is a big metal can. Um, interesting. Might be a resistor or a resistor network. And here we've got some more interesting construction. Um, I'm going to try and get this camera to focus a little closer because this is just crazy what they've done in here. Okay, so it looks like the trick is to go into camera mode, focus the camera, and then go back into video mode and it will keep its focus. Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty difficult. But have a look at that. Look at this. They have, you know, manually handmade these tiny little ceramic substrates. I don't know if there are any components on them or if they're just used um, to connect those magnet wires to. And then they've got this extremely thin magnet wire uh, which comes off those ceramic substrates and connects either to the board or some of them are connected, this is hard to handhold, I apologize. Um, some of them are connected to like this um, ceramic standoff or Teflon standoff. Um, so yeah, ultra ultra high impedance um, construction techniques in here, but I've never seen this crazy fragile um, thin magnet wire and then these ceramics substrates with the little coils. I'm not sure if those coils are intentional for um, you know noise reduction or something like that or not, but yeah, absolutely insane. And they've got some more over here. Um, same same thing there. Um, so yeah, this is all the ultra high impedance stuff, and that's why I think also that this uh, up here, this thing is the ADC, because it looks like somewhere along the way here they buffer it, and they no longer need to do that high, ultra high impedance 
um, input circuitry anymore because it's being buffered by one of these amplifiers in this area, I, I suspect. So, um, yeah, absolutely crazy construction technique. I don't want to know how difficult those were to make because uh, I'm sure that that was someone's job to sit there and, um, and just build these all day, these tiny little fiddly things. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. And then they've also got this, which is interesting, which is... Um, Looks like they've got three transistors on a ceramic substrate, um, a, a little standoff circuit, and there's definitely, you know, some some connections on there. I wonder if those are amplifiers or something, um, just standalone, you know, FET amplifiers or something along those lines that uh, they decided to just build as a module and. Um, it doesn't look like they did it because they ran out of room. I think they could have fit those onto the main board. Um, but maybe they wanted the ultra high impedance of the ceramic substrate or something like that. Anyways, uh, let's go back and uh, look at the rest of it. Alright, so back to the tripod. Um, here are those crazy ceramics that we were looking at and then those amplifier boards um, on the ceramic substrate. Um, like I was saying, I think this is probably done but for high impedance. Um, rather than for board space reasons, I think they easily could have fit these on there. So um, I think that's for the, the characteristics of that substrate. Um, we've got another hybrid here. Uh, it's very similar to the other one, but it's got a different number, RF9418THD689. Um, so I'm guessing that that's probably something completely different. Um, maybe an input amplifier or um, some other digital logic controlling this. Uh, input section. Um, we've got these huge resistors. I suspect these are for input uh, protection or something like that. Um, they've also got the high impedance um, Teflon washers around their connection points. So uh, I'm thinking that those are um, this is all the input. And then you've got the input, this green yellow wire go off into this input can uh, as do the black and red wire uh, which also come down here to high impedance um, connections. So these look to be, uh, one of these is going to be the current drive for the um, ohms range, which I'm going to guess is these red and black ones. I don't know for sure, but I think that the signal path uh, goes through this way. Um, and out this way for the sense terminals. These are probably the measurement side. And then this side over here is the uh, constant current generator for the um, four wire ohms. Um, we've got a couple nice relays here, nice big ones, easily replaceable except for the fact that they soldered everything down. Um, but it uh, looks like they've got nice screws there and you can just pop those off. Um, they look really nice. They've got nice thick leaf in there. Beautiful. Um, what else have we got here? We got some logic, more logic. Actually, sorry, no, these are um, LM339s. Five LM339s. Um, obviously, <laughs> driving something there. Um, I haven't seen something like this before. Uh, that's an inductor. It's labeled L3. Um, don't really recognize that kind of packaging, but I guess it's just kind of a potted inductor. Um, it seems to be in the high impedance section as well, along with this relay, which, let's see, switches one signal there, one signal there. So I was thinking when we were looking on the other side of the board, oh, they haven't used any bodge wires, they've got everything on the board. And then coming over to this side, they've got these quite thick and uh, nicely bent to perfect shape um, jumper wires here. Not sure quite why they needed those, but maybe, again, that's probably for high impedance um, techniques, as they all seem to go into those Teflon insulated um, solder pots. Um, so yeah, these relays are probably, I'm going to guess, switching the input attenuation. Uh, one of them seems to go into this, which leads into a whole chain. And then this one over here bypasses that and goes directly there. So uh, I'm thinking this is the input attenuator and this is uh, bypassing some or all of it for the range switch. Um, 
I'm gonna take a break, I'll be back in a moment. So right back into it, we're gonna have a look at, I think this is just a digital section over here. Um, except for another one of those hybrids. Um, so we got a third one of these, uh, interesting looking hybrids. This one's an RF9417 THD688. So very similar numbers, uh, it makes me think they're custom um, for this design. Um, but we'll see if I can find any information on those and uh, annotate it. Because uh, I'm curious, they seem to have quite different functions, but they're all in the high impedance uh, analog signal section. So, um, uh, be interesting to know what they're doing. Um, they've got a shrink wrapped um, TO220 package here. Again, all in the high impedance Teflon um, solder bucket things. Um, this is a Toshiba 2SC505 or maybe 605. Um, that's going to be, I'm pretty sure that's a Toshiba FET, um, JFET probably. Uh, more high impedance amplifiers. These are, well, let me get down in there and see if I can figure them out. Uh, 4393 this one is, N4393, maybe that's, yeah, 2N4393. Um, I'm going to assume that these are all JFETs. They're all labeled gate drain source, GDS, GDS, GDS. Um, and considering this is high, ultra high impedance, uh, I'm going to guess those are JFET input stage. Uh, we've got another OP07 here, another, that's again, that's a high precision op amp. Um, NEC, C301AC, no idea what that is. Uh, TL081, that's a fed input, uh, just bog standard op amp. Um, I'm not sure what this guy is here. If you can see that, slightly off the screen. This gun here, it's got a little paint stripe on it. Um, it says 3.3 slash 1661. It's got a plus mark on this green side. Um, I guess that's a capacitor. It's marked as a capacitor, but uh, strange package. Um, and then they've got this, I'm pretty sure that's a resistor network there but it's, it looks like paper, not even, I want to be careful with it, but it's got two terminals, two terminals, two terminals, two terminals, um, and it's, uh, it looks like the construction of a resistor network. It's labeled M003, and uh, the company logo that looks like MK, um, so I don't know what that, that thing is. Um, it's labeled on the schemat, or sorry, on the silk screen as a MB1. Um, really no idea what that is. It seems to be surrounded. These are LM339s. Uh, we've got a TC, that's a 4020-40288P, TC40288P, uh, H74HC17, uh, TD62003AP from Toshiba. No idea what that is. Uh, 74HC 174, yeah, 174, 174, 174, pretty standard. Um, 175, 74HC 02, and this is all just glue logic, some 74LS, 74LS, 70, this is all 74LS up here. TLO 84, that's a four quad of the TLO 81, uh, HC 74 uh, flip flop. And this is a uh, Fairchild part. It's interesting ceramic. Um, it's got test points. CMCK um, comparator clock, maybe. Uh, CMDT. Not sure what that would be. And rest, which I wonder mean might mean reset. Uh, it's labeled U21. Um, part number is a Fairchild uh, MB60H125. And this great ceramic dip braised package, really beautiful. I love these. Um, so I'm. This is probably controlling 
Um, the ADC would be my guess, but I'll look that up and hopefully be able to find some information on it. I th I'm guessing that this here is sort of digital timing and driver circuitry. And then over here we've got all our analog amplifiers, attenuators, um, and the actual ADC uh, integration section over here somewhere. That's what I think is going on, um, but we'll see if that bears fruit when I look up all these parts. Um, this guy down here, really hard to read, is an AD7528. I'm going to guess that's a DAC, um, but it could be an ADC or something completely unrelated. Um, got some more of these MB parts. MB, MB, quite a few of those. Don't know what they are. I'm quite curious about those, but I doubt I'll find anything on them. Um, there's another clock crystal here. Um, this guy is a 24 megahertz, uh, running this ADC section. And uh, that's about covered it. We got a couple connectors for off board. Um, I don't want to take this apart any further. I'm curious to know what these voltage regulars, regulators are. I'm curious to know what some of these uh, CAN transistors are. Um, 4117A, 2N4117, 2N4117, 4117. Um, all right, so let's see how hard it's going to be to get this front panel off. Um, I'm guessing it's held on with these larger screws here on top and bottom, and then probably just folds off. Let's give that a try. Well, no, that doesn't seem to have done it. It also seems to be held on to the frame um, with two more screws on the top here, here, and here on both sides. So we'll take those out as well. All right, well that was nice of them. You can see that they've used this uh, ribbon cable obviously to connect the front panel, but uh, this wire, these two gray wires that uh, go off um, for the power switch, they are soldered on both sides, so can't easily disassemble that, but uh, we'll take it apart from this angle instead and I'll see if I can get you any closer. Um, so, as Dave likes to say, we got to <laughs> Look at the ass end there. There's not much interesting on this side. No components anyway. Um, so let's pop these screws out and see what it looks like on the inside. Solid aluminum. Um, very nice. Looks machined as well. Might be punched. Hard to say. Um, so I'm quite curious to see what that LED display um, for the units looks like. Um, yeah, and on closer inspection, I'm pretty sure that this smaller connector that uh, we were looking at before um, goes to the buttons. However, there do some to, seem to be some traces um, from the buttons going up to this as well, so I wonder if it's a combination um, they they just needed, you know, how many is this? They needed 60, 60 conductors to get it done and just decided not to group them at all. They're just going to put everything into, um, you know, whatever makes the most sense for the board layout. Um, quite interesting to see these dot matrix LED arrays um, that they use for the units. They look beautiful. I really like them a lot. Um, Never seen anything like that in any other instrument, I don't think. Um, I did come across something similar the other day, I can't remember what it was on. Um, but uh, yeah, very unique and I like it a lot, much better than the, you know, Starburst or um, other common techniques from the era, maybe using an indicator under the unit. Um, this is just way better. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Some simple buttons, a couple LEDs, and that's all that's on this board. Um, there is literally nothing else on here. No logic, no transistors, no diodes, just LEDs and uh, buttons. 
So pretty uninteresting, we'll put that back together. And just before I throw this back together, you can see how nicely shielded both on the front and the rear um, the input section is. Um, oh, what the hell. Let's take that off and have a look. There might be something in here. Um, kind of doubt it, but let's have a, have a look-see. Got it open. So you can see that pretty well. Um, this switch on this side is, I believe, just from the number of contacts, the front rear um, switch. This is the guard terminal switch, which shorts the guard terminal to chassis ground or um, leaves it open so you can connect your own guard amplifier there. Um, and the four terminals, so yeah, nothing much to see there. It's interesting that this switch is too long um, to fit in the case, so they had to machine or punch, whichever they did, this large hole here um, just to fit that and the cables that go with it. Uh, and there it is, folks, back together and measuring properly once again. Um, I hope you enjoyed that teardown. I found this meter um, to be uh, pretty interesting inside. The construction techniques used for the ultra-high impedance are not ones that I've seen uh, other than those Teflon solder cups which I've seen before but those crazy uh, coils of magnet wire, never seen that before. Um, I did take a look when I was putting it back together, these feet don't fit on the bottom so I guess those feet have just gone missing. Um, anyways, I apologize for the poor lighting quality, I don't have any portable lights that I can easily use for this and I've been shooting at night. Um, in the kitchen, so unfortunately not ideal, but I hope you got something out of it. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I've posted a high resolution photos. So you'll find the links down below if you are interested in um, seeing some close ups of those crazy techniques. Thanks.